Every time you make up your mind you're going to meditate, it's a form of right resolve. You're looking for happiness that's not dependent on sensuality, it's not dependent on ill will. There are forms of happiness dependent on ill will. When you like to think about all the exquisite pain that your enemy is going to go through, but you decide to give that happiness up. Any happiness based on harmfulness, you're going to give that one up too. You're looking for a happiness that's innocent, a happiness that doesn't create any harm for anybody. Just having that thought is a good thought. And then, of course, then you want to carry through with it. There are two ways you can do this. One is to focus on thoughts of goodwill. That's the topic of your meditation. You wish for your own happiness, you wish for the happiness of others. True happiness. Because the principle of karma is that no one's going to find happiness unless they learn how to act skillfully. When you wish for people's happiness, or the happiness of animals, or whatever, you're hoping that they can understand the causes for true happiness and then act on them. In other words, you hope that they develop right view and right resolve as well. Now that kind of thought is should be easy to think. It's not like you're hoping that people who are evil will suddenly be happy as they're doing evil. Or regardless of what their actions are, you're hoping that they see that what they're doing is evil, and then they give it up. Now the question of whether anyone's actually going to do that, the simple thought in your head is not going to have that kind of impact. But you want to make sure that your motivation is right, because this is an important part both of discernment and concentration. The discernment lies in realizing that your actions can lead to suffering, and so you want to make sure you don't do anything that's going to lead to suffering, and you have to look at your motivation to protect yourself from unskillful actions. So thoughts of goodwill are a form of protection for yourself. Another reason why it should be easy to think thoughts of goodwill. As I would have said, goodwill is a good object for concentration. It can get you into, at the very least, the first jhana. And when you take that level of concentration and you work with it, develop the factors of awakening around it, it forms the basis for something even better. At the very least, a mind that's still and harmless. And you can take it as a foundation for gaining the noble attainments. That's one way in which you can use a right resolve to get into concentration. The other way is to look at your thoughts and see anywhere where you're engaged in thoughts of sensuality, thoughts of ill will, thoughts of harmfulness. Try to counteract them directly. Thoughts of sensuality. Think about all the harm that's done by getting fired up with sensual desire, all the stupid things you do. If you don't want to look at the stupid things you've done, you can look at the stupid things other people do under the power of sensual desire. Same with ill will. When people have ill will, they get really, really blinded. They've got themselves on fire with the ill will. And the other person that they have ill will for probably doesn't even know anything about it. So who's suffering? The person with ill will. And again, you realize that if you allow yourself to think thoughts of ill will, they're going to come out in your actions at some point. You're missing an important protection, because the main danger in life 
doesn't come from outside. It comes from your own unskillful intentions. So you need the protection of goodwill. As for thoughts of harmfulness, that's when you see somebody suffering and you want to make them suffer more. And the same principle applies here, just creating more bad karma for yourself. So you're trying to think in ways that will counteract those unskillful thoughts. And try to think at the very least in ways that are not involved with sensuality, not involved with ill will, not involved with harmfulness. And then you can reflect on the fact that okay, if you think in these ways, you could think all day and it wouldn't cause you any harm aside from the fact that thinking a lot wears you down. So the mind needs to rest. And when you've been thinking skillful thoughts like that, then it's easy to get the mind to settle down. Much more than if you've been thinking unskillful thoughts and you're trying to jump straight to concentration, the mind is going to resist. It's got some unfinished business it's got to take care of first, so you take care of that business. If you think about people at work who've been unfair to you and you're all worked up about that, well, try to remind yourself this is the human condition. The world gives lots of ways of counteracting ill will. One is that this is normal in, in the human realm. If you want to live in a place where everybody is fair, you're in the wrong place. And you're not the only one who's been the victim of unfair treatment. So you decide not to get worked up about it. Not that you become a doormat for other beings, but for the time being, at, the, at least, just let those thoughts go. The mind needs to rest. So first counteract the thoughts and then allow it to rest. So it's in this way that discernment can lead to concentration. You see the need for skillful intentions. And so on the one hand, you develop goodwill as a way of protecting your intentions, and on the other, you counteract other unskillful thoughts, like thoughts about sensuality. You can think about the unattractiveness of the body, that if you're desiring somebody's body. Well, First take the skin off your body and see what it looks like inside. Then remind yourself, the other person's body is just like that. One of the best ways of bringing the mind to concentration is to develop a sense of sangwega, realizing that all the things that you've been pursuing come down to nothing much. The ways you've been pursuing happiness in one way or another, especially in sensuality, that's it's just a lot of trouble, and it's totally unsatiable. As the Buddha said, if it rained gold coins, we wouldn't have enough for our sensual desires. There's no fulfillment to be found that way. So if you can develop a sense of sangwega for those kinds of thoughts, it makes it a lot easier for the mind to settle down. Then you can bring it to the breath. You know, as soon as you leave the, leave the breath, you're going to go back to those same old pointless thoughts. Why go? So one of the most effective ways of dealing with the distraction is to develop that sense of some wega first. It's bring as a way of bringing the mind down. So it's in these ways the right resolve connects with the right concentration. All the factors of the path connect. They help one another along. But this connection is especially strong. The Buddha points it out several times. He says, when the mind is finally in right concentration, that's when you are totally free from unskillful resolves. And his definition of transcendent right resolve is the directed thinking and evaluation that bring the mind into concentration. So this is a particularly close connection here. So if you find your mind wandering off, remember, you're wandering off into wrong resolve. Is that where you want to be? You're wandering into dangerous territory. 
can, and they compare that to a monkey that leaves the monkey places in the forest and comes out to areas where they're both human beings and monkeys. And in areas like that, of course, the human beings are coming to hunt the monkeys. And it's easy to get trapped when you're there. It's the same way when your mind wanders off into thoughts of sensuality, or thoughts of ill will, or thoughts of harmfulness. You're in dangerous territory. So come back in here where it's safe, right where you're here with the breath. And simply the thought of coming back, that's a form of right resolve, too. Even better is when you carry it through, when you stay here. So there's a very close connection between the discernment factors and the concentration factors. even though when the mind is very still like this and it doesn't seem to be doing anything. Don't think that it's not doing anything. At the very least, it's in safe territory. And when it really settles in here, then it has a chance of seeing the safe territory even more clearly. So allow the mind to settle in. And don't be afraid that you're missing out on anything. The things that you really need to know are all going to appear right here. So you want to be here. You can't tell when they're going to come. It's like going out trying to hunt a rabbit. You know the place where rabbits tend to go, so you go there. And you have to sit very quietly but be very alert. But you can't make an appointment with a rabbit. You just know that this is a place where they're likely to come, and then you sit there. And when they come, then you'll be able to get the rabbit. It's the same with discernment and concentration. The simple fact that you're bringing the mind out of its unskillful ways and into concentration, that's already a beginning of discernment. And then as you sit here alert and quiet, you're primed to see even more subtle discernments when they appear.